Okay, so I'm going to switch gears here and talk about visions for the future and some novel strategies, um, in particular focusing on engagement and uh, in self-care and supportive service providers. And the fundamental challenge I'm working on is in regards to self-management. So increasingly in our healthcare system, we recognize that patients or clients need to be very active in their own management of their health and risk behaviors. Um, so the question we're asking ourselves is, well, what do our clients and patients do between our in-person contacts, our visits, between the three to six months between medical visits, the seven plus days between mental health visits or group meetings or behavioral intervention sessions, or the critical days and hours between intensive interventions like outpatient drug treatment that where you might go to a group three times a week. And the question I ask providers is, well, so what's the, what happens? What, what, what do your patients say when you say, how did you work towards your goal? Go since the last time we saw each other, and they often say, oh, I didn't even think about it at all, I didn't do anything. So how can we engage patients and clients to be more active participants in their care? And the answers that we're looking for, the solutions are around mobile technology, mobile health. So our phones are always on, always worn, and always connected. And we have these uh, inc increasing uh, diversity of ways that we can engage and support ourselves and each other. Um, and the broader vision is this kind of M Health, uh, M -health movement, which you may have heard of. But the, the basic idea is to use mobile um, devices to enhance the health and wellness by extending care and interventions beyond the traditional clinical visit. And so, um, and, it, and it's not just pushing information or data, it's about feedback loops. So for example, our behaviors, our actions, our, our diagnoses, our results, our self-reports go into kind of a personal repository, uh, like a medical record, for example. They can be processed in the cloud. They can be aggregated back into um, visualization, data visualizations. It's so much data, we have to build these into our, our tools so that they can become useful for ourselves as, as patients and for our providers. Um, we talk about driving with dashboards. And what we mean is data-driven feedback loops. And this is a public health approach, right? But mobile phones allow us to translate this approach all the way down to the participant, the patient's level self-care. So asking questions like for the patient, how is, this, how is this new treatment or medication working for me, this new intervention? At clinical care level or, or service provider level, how is my client responding to this intervention? And at the research evidence level, what's working best for who and what conditions and what circumstances? That's the opportunity that we're working towards. And of course, smartphone apps is the wave of the future, and it's already here for many of us. A lot of the stuff we can do with text messaging, but being innovators, we have to look towards the future. And we can do stuff that's time, time aware, so sending triggers or interventions or reminders or self-assessments at time, but also location, what we might call geofencing, and uh, we're using these kinds of geolocation apps to connect with potential romantic partners, and we can also use them to enhance our health and wellness. Um, but ultimately, I'm looking at self-monitoring as a form of self-management. So self-tracking behaviors, coping strategies, risk events, affects, symptoms, quality of life, kind of the holistic, whole person, all of these things that interact to support ourselves, help us to feel better, but also can be related to our risk behaviors. So self-monitoring for self-management, what does that mean? That means increasing my awareness of my symptoms, my, my risks, my behaviors, my thoughts, my actions, my, and the patterns between them, and then ultimately supporting behavioral change by reminders or mindfulness um, and logging to track and motivate my progress. And so there's some examples from a, a pilot study we did at APLA with people living with HIV, just some preliminary feedback on using a self-monitoring app. And this is outside of a treatment context, outside of intervention context. This is just people with HIV self-monitoring over six weeks with a smartphone app. And 47% reported improved medication adherence. Just by saying things like, it's, it helps keep me on track with taking my medications. Um, helps me remember to take my medication on time, and it helps me stay on track with quitting my smoking because we were, we were going for uh, kind of overall health and wellness behaviors. Stress and mental health, you know, 50% of the people reported that they had some increased awareness of how their stress and mental health relate to their health behaviors, and about 30% reported some therapeutic or cathartic benefit just from self-monitoring and self-tracking. Now, if we can take this stuff and leverage interventions with it, we would hope that we would amplify this effect. 
substance use as well, similar kinds of ideas. I saw that when I was bored and lonely and wasn't feeling healthy or thought about my illness, it triggered me to do drugs. Or it helped me realize that we usually smoke weed to get intimate, me and my partner. Um, so the next step was to build dashboards for providers and patients to visualize this intensive data. Um, the data could be reported on a multiple time per day basis or on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. The frequency um, I'll talk about in a minute. This is from a project we're doing with uh, Kathy Reback at Friends Research Institute um, on the Friends Getting Off intervention. It's a methamphetamine and HIV risk reduction intervention for MSM. And here, you can't see it, it's very small, but people are reporting their affect, their feelings of sadness and depression and energy and vitality uh, throughout the day, multiple times per day. These are guys going to a group session three times a week. So we're getting really intense. They're highly motivated for change, and we're getting highly um, uh, intensive active self-monitoring. Um, and, uh, and also in relation to their meth use, to their sexual behaviors, and to the triggers for sexual behaviors, methamphetamine use. Now what happens is the patients or the clients can look at this data, but they're using this data with their substance abuse counselor to help problem solve um, how they can better manage their triggers and their, their cravings. Um, another innovation that we're working on is uh, what we call pattern change detection, so computer algorithms that take this data and can automatically identify when there's a change in the pattern. So for example, if it's medication adherence, you're reporting that you're taking your medication and then you stop reporting or you miss a medication. Uh, a computer algorithm could identify that and send you a triggered intervention that says, hey, we haven't heard from you uh, in the last couple days. How's it going with your meds? Or remember to take your meds. Great. Um, and lots of other, other kinds of things. Anything that we could monitor can be kind of identified in these algorithms and can trigger interventions, follow up, or could even trigger and send information to a healthcare provider to follow up and say, hey, how's it going? We haven't heard from you. Now, as a person who's used these self-monitoring apps, um, what happens is I'm starting to engage not only in my own care, but I'm imagining that my healthcare provider or my counselor is looking at my data and even if they're not, the thought that that data is available to them helps me to really think like, oh, they're going to be so proud that I'm doing so well, I'm really adhering, or I'm really doing much better today. And that's where we're trying to get in with this feedback, uh, with these feedback loops, and um, kind of tr increasing this engagement between patient and providers between their in-person contacts and visits. Um, and these are just some examples of, of a very simple kind of a little intervention, a micro-intervention here that would say, based on the data that they provided, hey, you did a great job. You know, you met your goal. You exercised, for example, for this, for this app. Now, this could be a platform also for sending micro-interventions like behavioral economic interventions that you're going to hear about in the next couple of talks. Um, little small things that might be able to help motivate in incremental small ways change behaviors. Now, um, most recently, I've been working with, uh, with the medical care coordination team at the LA and Gay and Lesbian Center to try to figure out how we can develop these tools to support their clients. And you heard a little bit about these acuity levels. It's hard to see, but there's a self-managed state, which is where we want to get people in MCC. It's all about getting people to be self-managed. Then they have minimal sort of intervention and follow-up. But we have moderate, high, and severe acuity levels. And depending on the, the acuity level, which basically is based on the data that they provide, how um, how easy or hard of a time are they having engaging in their self-care, we provide, or MCC provides, more intensive follow-up. So you might have a brief intervention every 90 days if you're moderate, or monthly if you're high acuity, or weekly uh, if you're severe acuity. And so these kind of the frequency of this kind of check-ins would vary based on the acuity. So if you're doing pretty well, you might just check in once a week on your mobile app that just kind of tells your MCC providers, your, particularly your, your PCM, which is your, um, your case manager, your psychosocial case manager, hey, you know what, this week everything is going fine, I'm doing pretty good. Or this week I was having a hard time, I missed some of my medication doses. But the idea is that the patient knows that the provider is looking at and accessing the data. Um, and that is an, uh, the, the hypothesis that is increasing the engagement in care and self-care. Now, the last kind of coda here is that this is not just applies to individual patients, but also can apply to health care providers. And in particular, we think a lot about outreach workers like community health workers, but for care coordination and case management. 
So it's another, this is another data ecosystem slide, but basically you have field workers with mobile phones, you have managers and supervisors with dashboards to monitor, and then that can then uh, be used to send um, interventions or kind of reminders or triggers to your outreach workers on how to improve their outreach support. These are field workers in Calcutta. Uh, these are STD and HIV prevention outreach workers. They do treatment follow-up. Um, they're sex worker peer outreach workers, and they now have their mobile phones that uh, we did a little project, pilot project, for their follow-up support. So converted their paper-based reporting forms onto the phone. So instead of going back at the end of the day, do all their reporting and recall back to their supervisors, oh, I did this many contacts. Instead, they're doing it all in real time. And it's also a reminder and a trigger for them about the kinds of things that they need to, to address. So this is from a pre and postnatal intervention program with Mary Jane in South Africa. But it's kind of things like, did you hit the content areas you, you're, you want to hit? Um, how much time did you spend delivering these sessions? And it's, it's all about supervision and support. So this is a little hard to see, but this is a, a very simple study, a randomized trial that was done with community health workers with mobile phones. This is a, a, a performance indicator. In this case, this is uh, time to the interventions, uh, time to deliver their follow-up sessions. And here, this is before the intervention, you see that there's this decline in performance after the initial training, always happens. Then they implemented, with half the group, they implemented a very simple mobile phone app to support the community health workers with a supervisor versus a control condition that didn't get any mobile phone support, and their productivity continued to decline until they kind of reached their valley of mediocre performance. Um, whereas up here, we saw continued pretty good up and down performance. The second part of the study, they dropped the supervision aspect on this group, and we saw performance decline. But on this group, they continued with the supervision in conjunction with the mobile app. So, the mobile app is not the answer, it's just one piece to support, and it's about the supervision and the ability to provide ongoing problem-solving, decision-making support for the health workers out in the field. So that's my 10 minutes.